There's the music, and that means we are live here on the middle on a Tuesday edition, a special edition on a Tuesday. We got Dan Cilio sitting in once again for Barrett Brooks, and I am Harry Mays, and we got a lot of football to discuss. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that god-awful game last night <laughs> and the impact that it had on the Philadelphia Eagles and their playoff chances and also their drafting uh, position because both were uh, sort of in play last night. And uh, there's some new injury updates with regards to the Eagles for this game against Washington, which is a must win if you want to make the playoffs. And I got some questions about that for you, Dan, and for the, the people on the stream. And, uh, you know, just basically I want to find out from you before the end of the show today, really who you think or who we think as a as a group is really good in the NFL, because I've seen a lot of bad football this season, some of it not maybe the team's fault because of this whole virus situation and so forth, where you're down to like fourth string quarterbacks, you're plucking quarterbacks off of practice squads of other teams during the week of your game and all that kind of thing. But there's a, there's been a lot, there's a lot of bad teams and I want to figure out who is really good. And if the Philadelphia Eagles are in that group before the end of the show today, what do you think about that? What do you, what, and, and you got to remember, Harry, this is going to be a group exam. Everyone always looks at the quarterbacks. And by the way, last night, like you said, oh. I thought the no-name defense of the Dolphins was out there. Eight sacks on Ian Book, kid. <laughs> you know, hey, Duck, just do me a favor, Duck. I mean, eight sacks last yeah. night. Holy <laughs> cow, man. You know what? And I had no idea that the Saints were 7-7 seven and seven going into that game. I, mean, I know. What a great coaching job by Sean Payton going in. They had but, won two straight coming into that. Remember, they beat the Tampa Bay Bucks in that beat the God brakes off game, them nine too. to nothing or whatever it was. Yeah, they beat yeah. the brakes off them. <laughs> so, so I mean, Harry, this year it's been so razor thin at the top with the really great teams. Yeah, and it's been really like a whole bunch of good football. You know, you know, it's funny. I have people come on my channel later on in the afternoon with uh -huh. the national football show. They go seals one week. You're here one week. You're here one week. You're there. And I'm going, that's the story of the league this year. Yeah. It's right. like one week we're talking about the bucks being unbeatable or the Cowboys being unbeatable. Or then the they Cardinals. go through these horrendous you know, the trends. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so I would say this, who have been the hottest teams over the last month? Because December football usually tells you, and it's traditionally ugly football. Then you start playing playoff football once you start getting into January. But look, the Packers right now, in my yeah. opinion, they're probably playing the best football because of the way they're playing on defense. Not just the fact that Aaron Rodgers is having another MVP season, but if you look, and think of this for a second too, Harry. So that guy, Matt LaFleur, the head coach of – the Packers mm -hmm. has won 36 ball games in his first three years as head coach of the Packers. That is unfreaking believable that they have put that kind of number up with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, hey, they were right to jettison Mike McCarthy because yeah. they were not going anywhere. Then you look at yeah, he's Kansas been exposed. City. Look how Kansas City has really, I mean, what was it? When they played, actually, I think it really started for them, their turnaround when they played the Eagles. All of a sudden, since that Eagle game mm -hmm. where they put up 200 yards rushing, I think it's been a different Kansas City team, and now they're sitting on top of the AFC. So if I had to pick the two best teams in the league right now, I don't think it's any coincidence that the quarterbacks you're looking at right now are Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. I mean, those two teams there, and probably the best coaching job, there's two of them. I think Mike Vrabel, the job that he's done without Fantastic. Derrick Henry in Tennessee. Yeah. And I think Sirianni's job, man. I mean, getting that team to eight and seven has been remarkable. Yeah, it is. It's it's one of the one of the better jobs uh you know of the league. There's no doubt about it. But Kansas City, I think, really turned their their tables when they got start started to get a little healthier on the defensive side. They made the move for Ingram coming over from the Steelers. And they changed up that defensive front, moving guys, you know, into sort of inside, outside, so forth. They just – their defense is way different than what it was in September and early October. And, uh, you know, when you say Tennessee, I was really impressed uh, with what they did on Thursday night. I mean, they were a home underdog, and they were down 10 nothing to the Niners, who were one of the hotter teams in the NFL coming into that week, and came back and found a way to get that game tied. And then – 
uh, Tannehill makes a huge play with his legs down the stretch and puts him in field goal range. I thought that was a really impressive win. And they may end up getting Derrick Henry back if they can stay in the playoff race long enough. Absolutely. Supposedly you know? he's coming back for the opening round of the playoffs. And by the way, what about Fredo Wentz and the job that he's done <laughs> yeah. with uh, – that Colts team, yeah. I mean, they're now nine and six. He's got he's gonna throw 30. I've now learned a lesson here. Everybody, uh Big Z was falling asleep when I brought up Wentz, so I have to name him Fredo. You're nothing to me. Fredo, every time my mother comes to the house, make sure you let me know when you're coming here because I won't be at the link. I don't want anything to do with you, and I don't want to see you on Broad Street. Just let me know. I won't show up. Fredo Wentz. There we have it, but he's done a nice job. You got to admit it. And he made a hell of a throw uh, to find the back of the end zone, moving to his left. And, yeah, it was really uh, tremendous. He hasn't turned the ball over. Uh, He hasn't been put in a lot of positions. I thought the coaching that Frank Reich has done has been masterful, too. I mean, they started out one and four also. They you know, were we, we were starting right to think we were starting to wonder here, Sills, in early October, were they going to bench Wentz at yeah. some point just to save the draft pick? Because there was no way they were going to be competing for a playoff spot. And then Henry goes down and they started to go on a on a run. And you're like, man, you know, all of a sudden they rattle off a couple in a row. And next thing you know, they're a playoff team. That Jonathan Taylor, man, I oh. mean. Unreal. Dude, he is, you know, you know, if you think about all the Wisconsin running backs that have come out of that program, I mean, you have to go all the way back to Amici. I yeah. mean, look, the guy, Ron Dane, not really all that much. Fletcher was kind of decent. I mean, they really were great college backs. This kid's mm-hmm. turned out to be a hell of a NFL back. I mean, he's going to get 1,800 yards. He's in the MVP conversation. I mean, he catches the ball out of the backfield. And you know what? They remind me a little bit of what, if you took two teams and put them next to one another, don't you think that the Colts and the Eagles look alike? I mean, don't don't they look alike? Maybe well, you're getting a little bit more out of Wentz, but how about the philosophy? Run the ball, yeah. play great defense. I mean, they kind of look alike when it comes to how they want to move the chains. I'll tell you this, too, about your boys with the Eagles on defense. This kid, Jonathan Gannon, mm-hmm. you know, since week eight, you know they got the number two defense in the National Football League. Yeah, I I, I got to put that in in parentheses though, because when you're facing you know Trevor Simeon, Daniel Jones, Zach Wilson, Garrett Gilbert, and Jake Fromm, you know I kind of got to put that a little bit into perspective and can't get too crazy about it. So wait a minute here, you you, you don't think the Giants had those two guys that were playing football for the Giants at quarterback? Man, I mean they couldn't make an arena league team. No, Glennon they too. They were yeah. terrible. Oh what? I mean, there, there was some hope for Glennon when he came out of college into the league. There were some. Do you people... know they gave him the job at NC State. Oh, they went to Russell Wilson at NC State and said Russell wanted to play his final year, his graduation year right. at NC State. So I forget O'Brien, whoever the coach was down there. They go, we're going to give the job to Mike Glennon. So he transfers to Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah. Takes that team to a Rose Bowl, and now Mike Glennon is like some sort of journeyman dude, it's man. It's unbelievable. Mean, it's crazy, but they're both. I can't. I can't believe that the Giants are in the position that they're in because that's good ownership. They, mm-hmm. if you took the Jets and the Giants uniforms, and I don't know if you could make one team with those two guys with those two units. No, you're you're right. I couldn't. I couldn't imagine being a, a pro football fan in New York of one of those teams or a, even a media person having to cover that stuff on a weekly basis. Yeah, but Harry, you know what it is in New York. They're front runners. They don't give a crap. They're on to the nets or, <laughs> you know, they'd rather they'd rather cover a drama team than a real good football team. I mean, right? I mean, the New Jersey Devils won three Stanley Cups and you wouldn't even know they were in the area. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's, that's what that place is. But again, man, like you said, passionate fans are the fans in New York that want to see winners. And you know what? They're not going to give it the time of day. Now in Philly, if you do here, – here, here's what I've learned about Philly, Harry. Hey, did you see the first six passes in that game on mm-hmm. Sunday against the Giants? What the hell's that guy doing throwing the ball? We won. Hey, I don't care. I'm telling you right now. Right. That's not how you get it going here. 
that's going to come back to bite us. That coach doing that crap at the beginning of the game. I'm going. That's, that's right. right. But that's they- right. <laughs> that's right. Because of the Philly fan says the Giants stink on ice. And somewhere along the line, we're going to have to play a good football team. And yes. that isn't going to beat a good football team. So that's the way we always look at it. We don't look at it for what it is right now. We're like always projecting down the line to say, hey, Wait, wait till the playoffs. Wait till the Cowboys on week 18. If they need the game, what are we going to do? So, hey, what do you think of Sirianni and what he's done with this football team? You think he's a coach of the year candidate? I, I think he's in the in the conversation. Um, I like the way, you know, the players respond to him. There's something, you know, he's quirky. He's a little weird. Yeah, I, don't know that, I, I don't know that I'd respond to it quite the yeah. way some of these players have, but the, that doesn't matter about me. It What matters is the locker room, and he seems to have command of the locker room which is, you know, one of the biggest things you can you can hope for in a coach at that level. And I thought, you know, sort of the the paradigm shift that he made between the Raiders game and the Lions game took a lot of stones because you know the front office doesn't want to win this way, okay? They just oh, so don't. you think they hate this style? I don't think that Jeffrey Lurie loves the fact that he's a run-first team with a quarterback that is primarily – That makes no a, sense to me. I know, I know, I know. I mean, th- th- doesn't the one-loss record matter? So then, not, in other words, then, he kind of hated the way that the Eagles won a Super Bowl in 17. Because uh, you but, want it with a dominant offensive line. Right, and a backup quarterback and all that sort of thing. I, I don't I don't know that he hated that because it was, you know, it was the the great white whale and they finally got it. And who cares how they got it? But I think he wants to win his next one with a quarterback that can dazzle with from the pocket with a big arm. That's what I believe. So so do you think that Jalen Hurts then is past the audition or not? I think he's past the audition for next year simply because I don't think they're going to be able to get any of the the veteran quarterbacks that may may be in play. And I don't even know if Aaron Rodgers is going to be in play after all this. No way. Why, hey, and, and get this. Okay. Let, 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 let's you and I have some common sense here. And you and I have been doing this a long time. Right. Why in the hell would you leave a position where I just told you you won 36 ball games mm-hmm. in the last three years? For what? To wet your whistle in New York with a horrible O-line? No. Or to try to do what – look at, at the end of the day – What LeBron James has done. Let's take him, for instance, here. He wins that bubble championship in Orlando, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to go out the same way that Kobe Bryant went out on a horrible team. But he didn't go to the Lakers. He went to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And that's always a remedy for disaster. You have to go to a place. Like when Russell Wilson picks a team, he's not going to stay in Seattle. He's not going to go to Chicago. He's got to go to a place where it's ready-made, like New Orleans. New Orleans is 7-7 and with a bunch of trash quarterbacks. I mean, seriously, you put somebody like Russell Wilson in New Orleans with Sean Payton as a play caller, that team will win 12 ball games. They'll probably lose their defensive coordinator. Where's he going to go, Cleveland? Uh, I could think of maybe Miami. Miami, okay. Miami's a spot that I know his wife would probably like. Are you sure now, after what you're seeing with Tua Tug of Viola now, and how two has now put that team at eight and seven. I'll tell you something. If you're Chris Greer, the general manager of the Dolphins, aren't you doing this now? I'll tell you what, man. I mean, look, I mean, if I get Rodgers or I get Deshaun, okay, then I'm going to really have to debate. Then I'm going to have to give up some of my future. Am I going to yeah. be? They're winning ball games right now, Harry. Yeah, the they, Dolphins have a – I'm not going to take They won last 10 night. last year and missed the playoffs, and now they've won seven in a row. And I, th- I saw last night they're the first team in history yep. to ever lose seven straight and win seven straight in the same year. That is nuts. How about him for coach of the year, Brian Flores? Yeah, I like him. He's done a really nice job. He's done yeah, a great job. Too, I love their me- weapons, though. I love their wide receivers. Okay, so let end. me ask you this here for – okay, because this is such an eagle question. What are your – and I'm going to ask this question on my show later on, so let's do it here as well. So what are your expectations right now for this team? Are you are you are, are you looking forward to the playoffs? Do you want a playoff win? Um yeah. or do you want a winning record? What 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 would be well, the expectations as we get closer to the end of the season cuz things still have to fall in place for the Eagles to get you know, into the playoffs, a matchup. They're sitting in the seven hole right now. They kind of control their own destiny. But still, I mean, if this season ended, what would be your expectation if it ends up landing on? It would land on what? Playoffs, playoff win, winning record. 
Well, I'm going to say playoff win because I would say they're going to be the seventh seed lined up against the Dallas Cowboys, and I want to beat the Dallas Cowboys no matter when you play them, especially in the playoffs. To ruin their season would be spectacular. So even 120 it, minutes of football we're going to play against the Cowboys at the end of the year. Yeah, the first 60 may not count, but the, set, the second 60 would be the, the 60 I'm concerned about. And if they can find a way to win that game, and ruin their season. I don't care if they get beat by 30 the next week. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> what do you make of the Cowboys? Uh, when their defense turns people over, they're very dangerous. And they, they've got a de- they did that to Washington the other night. And you saw how they got out to that big lead. Um, you know, Dak looked pretty good because he's kind of a bully quarterback. He's good at playing from the front. You know, playing with the lead. I don't know how runner. much I don't know how much I like Dak if he's down two scores and and you need to make drives late in games to win them. But I like him when he's out in front. Harry, you're not congratulating a fish for swimming, are you? I no. mean, you're supposed to beat the hell out of the Washington well, thing. Right? What do you think about this week, though? Now they were embarrassed on national television against. Oh, they're the going to have all. They're going to be fired. Oh yeah, then that fight so on too. the sidelines too. Yeah, I think they're going to come to play. Oh, they, of course, oh, I yeah. really oh, do. Yeah. What? See all the things that you just said because look, this is the East. Mm-hmm. So all the things that you said, Washington's going to go like this. Look, our season is pretty much over, except for this. Let's ruin right the Eagles' opportunity at making it to the postseason. Let's go ahead, put our best effort forward. Yep. Oh, I, I expect, and if the Eagles think they're going to throw their helmet on the field, and, you know, they're going to be full force from what I'm understanding, all the COVID guys are going to be right. back, you're going to be taking on a football team that has, they had a pretty good run in the middle of the year there when they ended up beating Brady and a couple other teams in mm-hmm. there too. I think this is going to be a dogfight. Well, yeah, and throw in the fact that there's no Miles Sanders now. We've learned that <sighs> since yesterday. He's not going to play against Washington. And Jordan Howard had a stinger in the game uh, against the Giants, and we don't know of his availability. The coach said he's hopeful that he can play on Sunday. So hopeful doesn't, you know, no, doesn't no, no, sound no, no, like no. a lock. Yeah, Let's yeah. That and when I put my tooth under my pillow, I'm hoping the tooth fairy comes by and gives me 20 bucks. But hey, you know, <laughs> hey, or I hope I hit the lottery. Uh, yeah, no, right, no. Right. You, you, you're, you're now, and by the way, you're now at the end of the year here. Your identity is set. You're not mm-hmm. going to surprise anybody. You have to go out and you have to pound this team. And I was telling everybody, this is kind of like a metaphor here, what I'm saying here, or euphemisms or whatever you want to use. You got a football team that's dying on the side of the road right now. Kill it. Run it over with your car. Mm-hmm. Stick it with a knife. Put it out. Cut of its, its head off. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let it in any way feel that it could be resuscitated and keep those guys in a ball game. Mm-hmm. The Washington thing wants to, they want to get in their U-Hauls and go home. Well, yeah. Don't li- let them not delay that. If that if this gets out to a 10-0 lead like Washington had last oh. week. Troubles. You know, w- with Garrett Gilbert, and I thought he, I thought he represented himself pretty well for just joining the team about forty-eight hours prior, four days prior to the game. Uh, but if that happens with their, you know, their fresh starting lineup, it could be different. So, Absolutely. you know, they can't take this team lightly. That's for sure. At, there, there's, they're not a football team that can. It's going to go like you don't have a quarterback that could throw you out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is what I'm saying here with Jalen guys like Brady, guys like Aaron Rodgers, those kind of guys can Josh Allen has now turned that thing back. There's a handful and a half of guys that can do that in the league. Yeah. That can throw you out of trouble. You're down 21 points, Patrick Mahomes. There's no lead safe. You get down like that against the team. Our team reminds me of Baltimore when healthy. Mm-hmm. That you know how you beat the Eagles, get a lead on them. That's if I was the opposing offensive coordinator, let's spread these guys out immediately. Let's get a lead on them. Let's see how they play from behind. My opinion, I think the Eagles would struggle if you get in a, like like say Dallas at the end of the year, they get a lead on this Eagle team. I think the Eagles will have a tough time because if you're built on running the ball, mm-hmm. you're not going to have a lot of possessions. That means right. you've got to be able to not have have those careless turnovers. What do you make of Sirianni on the sidelines jumping on Jalen's ass the way he does? I, I loved it. I loved I it. Too. I loved it because it worked on Tuesday night. That's that's when he got into his kitchen after that fumble and they had just started out so poorly. And you know, listening to I stayed up the whole 
game and and all the press conferences afterwards that night. I was I was wound up, and I, I listened to Jalen was like, yeah, I, I basically I respond to that. I used to live with my coach because his father was his coach, and not only would he hear it at practice, he'd hear it at home too. So he's used to being coached. And I just think, I thought that was great. Just more of it. Let's get in, let's get into his kitchen a little early. How about this? You know, I, I asked Mike quick, that question about Fredo Wentz. If somebody asked, if somebody went after Wentz like that on the sidelines, Mike quick went like this, uh, that team a year ago with Fredo Wentz running it would never have come back and won a game like that. And quite frankly, he would have just melted on the sidelines like that. Mm -hmm. I think it shows you the medal of the kid too. Again, yeah. These are intangibles that you have to have at that position. Yep. I loved his answer, too, at the press conference when he was talking about a pass that he missed, and he was very meticulous. And That was missing Goddard the in the corner of the end zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was really good I, the way he went through that. Yeah, He went and broke down all the progressions and the things that he needs to see. I was like this. Yeah. That shows you that the kid's a savant, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, the, he's a real study. He's a real study of the game, and I, I really like that. It was basically the pre-snap read that he yes. got took Goddard out of the play. And yes. then the Giants changed their defense. Or they, they ended up running what was the wrong defense for the way they were lined up. And he then had already thought Goddard's out of the play. So I'm going to go through this way with my progression. I thought that was really – it was. I learned something. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Me too. I'm, yeah, because you know what I learned? I learned how he sees the game. Yeah. Okay, which made me think this. Okay, a lot of guys that come into the game, how many times do you hear Patrick Mahomes this year going, hey, this is really like the first year that I'm understanding true progressions of the game? How about when Michael Vick showed up in Philly? He mm -hmm. goes like this. This is the first time I really learned how to read defenses yeah. because now Andy Reid is teaching me how to read defenses. And then you're listening to Jalen talk about progressions. You're talking about, you know, sky and uh, disguises. You're talking about coverage and man and zone and, flip zones and all that. And he's talking about like all the game and he sees the game. I was like, wow, it taught me a lot yeah. about him. And it showed me that he's a true guy that sits down with the game film for you to be that kind of guy, Harry, mm -hmm. that means you got to be watching film like Brady 24 seven, right. To understand that. And he knows that that's the key to Brady. The key to Brady is hard work, perseverance and studying, right? And that's what keeps Brady in the guy in the game. First in, last out. Absolutely. Kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. I don't worry about him, uh, you know, his work ethic or his his desire to be great and improve on every day. I, I'm just gradually trying to fall in love more and more with the tangibles. I love all the intangibles. Don't get Absolutely. me wrong. Absolutely. He's yeah. he's spectacular. Hey, so what do you about what do you think of Lane Johnson um not not making the Pro Bowl? Uh, I don't really get caught up in the Pro Bowl, to, to be honest with you. Of course, he's deserving of it, but I think m him missing a couple games, I think probably is what may have been the difference. Yeah, so, be so because you. the players vote on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the players vote on that thing, and I was thinking to myself, okay, so I was wondering if the three games missed because of personal issues that the players took offense to that. That leads me to this. Aaron Rodgers, is he your most valuable player? Uh Boy, good question. I mean, let by me the look. way, Mr. Unvaxxed. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, MVP. be careful what you say because you know snowflakes will be jumping on oh, you. Oh, I know, I know, yes. I know. I want to now. It's dog, it's not close, really. No, it's not. I'm trying to make a case for other guys. I'm looking at the other teams, I'm trying to make cases for the other. Brady's got 11 players. or 13 picks or something, right? He's right, got four. Yeah, it's got to be Rogers. Now, where would you put Cooper Cup? And that uh, is he in the conversation? No way. No, he's a Christmas ball. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yes, the stream wants to know if we are live. Yes, we are live today. This is a live show. We will. I don't will... do tape. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the, the reason we said that is because they reran our show on Thursday and Friday of last week. I guess our Wednesday show. And some of the streamers were up here trying to get us to talk to them. And they thought it was a live show. <laughs> it took a while till they realized it was. You recorded. ever see that scene from The Godfather when the guy grabs the camera and throws big sills? We, 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 no, no. Well, oh, if you replay it, you'll know. Okay. Oh, is that where, where was that? Sunny? Did he rip yeah, the, the film like right out of the him, camera? Then he throws him a twenty. Hey, yeah. no, get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! <laughs> Love Sunny. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be Rogers. It's got to be Rogers. It's uh, got to be. It's got to be Rogers. Yeah.
It has to be. You think they'll hold that against him, the vaccination? I think problem? some will, yeah. Yeah. And I would, too. I mean, it's a, it's a blemish, but I still think he's the best. I still think okay, he's see, the MVP. And I, I, look at, I look at it the same way, but then I look at Harry. Okay, so I'm watching the, I'm watching the Packer game, okay? Mm-hmm. And not the board people here with this, but so Aaron Andrews does her, like, 10 feet interview with the guy, that yeah. social distancing thing. Right. And then as soon as she thought the cameras weren't on her, she goes over and hugs the guy. Right, 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 and, right. And, and I'm going like this. Yeah. So does Fox believe in it or not? Or right. is this just TV? I mean, it's just, yeah. it's, it, it, it's, it's hypocritical a little bit when you hear the media people, some of them right. saying it and not practicing it. And I'm just, right. again, I mean, well, it's There's just so like the politicians when they when they know they're not on camera, they did take their mask off. But when when the cameras come in, they're all masked up and you know ready to go. It's yeah. But the, I guess the sports networks all have news networks, so they have to continue with the with the sort of the you know the the, the gist of the whole thing. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So oh, man. now, where would you put Jonathan Taylor in that MVP? Here, let me, let me, let me, here. It's got to be, I, okay. And by the way, there's still two weeks here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, there's still two weeks in this. I think it's Rodgers. I think it's Brady. And I think it's got to be Taylor. Taylor. And you know third. what? Because I'll put the Christmas ball five because he's having a historic he's year. He's having an unbelievable season. Okay. No he's having a historic year. So yeah. I'll. I'll, I'll say that you gotta, you gotta put him in that conversation. Yeah. But I mean, look, I mean, wide receivers are most dependent position in the NFL. And personally, I don't think you need big time wideouts to win football games. Who was who are the big wideouts? You'll have to refresh my memory. Who were the big wideouts for the Eagles in seventeen when you guys won the Super Bowl? Alshon Jeffrey. Oh, I mean, Mr. You know, Mr. Yeah. Locker Room Cancer himself. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 So you had Alshon Jeffrey and then like who else? It was Zach Ertz was the tight end. Zach Ertz, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Tight ends becoming right. a major part of the game. So we went from one wide receiver to a tight end immediately. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> right. I don't see it th- th- that look who Brady went in those Super Bowls. Let's see, he won them with Deion Branch, Edelman, yeah, Amendola. Who's the Brown? Uh what was the guy? Troy Brown. Troy Brown. Yeah. The dual player. Mm-hmm. Who was uh, the guy? Chris Hogan, who was a lacrosse. He was a lacrosse guy. player. Yeah. <laughs> and then the tight ends. And then the tight ends, yeah. right? The killer yeah. himself. Right. Okay. No, I'm not talking about Jerry Lee. And then you had Gronk, <laughs> right? <laughs> Josh Allen lost too many games, or he'd be in the conversation. He's unbelievable. You know what? <laughs> They they came back against the Patriots, and I I love how people in the media go like this. Well, look at they're back. They beat New England. I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I think you've got to look over a stretch of games. Are you probably if you were if you're Andy Reid, what quarterback would you fear the most going into Arrowhead? Would it be Josh? It probably in the AFC would be Josh Allen. Do you agree? What about Burrow? Wow, dude! He put five. He put five hundred. Five twenty-five. Plus. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, dude, what he's is it, fourth, fourth biggest number ever. I think so. Yeah, I mean, he, and he's got great wide receivers. I don't care um, if the Ravens were putting a scout team out there. Yeah, five twenty-five, four touchdowns, man. no interceptions. How about this future for the NFL? So you've got a thousand yard back. You've got two receivers over a thousand yards, and you got a quarterback. That's over 4,500 passing yards. And they're all under the age of 26. Yeah. That's and maybe crazy. 24. Yeah. I mean, you they're talk your, about a future in Cincinnati. They're not your Cincinnati. grandfather's Bengals anymore. Okay. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Uh, now, but Cincinnati. Now, can you answer me this question? Like, the since we have seven teams in the playoffs and there's only one bye, let's say the Eagles play Dallas and – Dallas wins. Does Dallas play the one seed the next week? It doesn't seem right that the two would play the one that early, even though two and seven, if the Eagles won that game, I would think they'd play the one seed. The Packers would play the Eagles if they win. Right. But if Dallas wins, they don't play the Packers. They'd probably... They would play one of the... They would play... They play the four or five, maybe, or... Yeah, they would... 
they would play like like a team like San Francisco or somebody right. like that if they're in it or a team like I, I don't think Minnesota's still in it. No. Um, no. they would play one of those lesser teams. What other division? Maybe the Cardinals. Yeah, the four five game is Tampa Cardinals. Yeah. So wow. I think they'd probably play the winner of that game. Wait, man. Yeah. What, now, if you where are the Buccaneers in this playoff picture for you? Um depends on Fournette to me. He's a big part of what they do. Yeah. You know, them them losing that defensive end they have. Had, well, that's okay. true. Yeah, losing yeah, Shaq was th- uh, that was yeah, really Shaq Barrett. Yeah, yeah, Shaq Barrett going down killed them because yeah. they won last year with great pressure on the quarterback and running mm-hmm. the rock. And you know, with White I don't and think they're the line. same team. Yeah, and Fournette does a lot for them. Really, Fournette. playoff Fournette, man, he was spectacular yeah. last year. Did they even signed Le'Veon Bell off the bench. I know, I saw street. that. Now, yeah. did he play last week against Carolina? I, I didn't. I didn't watch that game, so I'm not sure if he played. But they signed that dude off the street. Hey, how about that guy's career path? This guy has 1,500 yards one year, 700 yards yeah. of catching, and you're sitting there going like, "This guy's one of the top five backs in the game, man." Yep. All of a sudden, he decided to sit out. He lost that $14 million. He takes less money, goes to the Jets, and no one's heard of him again. This he guy's like play. a witness protection. He did play. He had two carries for negative one yard. Awesome. I'm sure he'll be a factor with Brady then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. What a, what, a, what a good week's performance to get Brady to buy oh, in. Oh, yeah, no, I'm return. sure Brady's got yeah. you like right, right in his radar right now. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we're going to take a quick time out. We'll be back with a whole lot more here on The Middle, a special edition on a Tuesday with Dan Cilio and Harry Mays back in three. This is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. Turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com.
right, welcome back to the middle. Harry Mays along with Dan Cilio. And we got a lot of college football today, Dan. Actually, uh, at least to my knowledge, none of these games today have been postponed or canceled Ugh. in the last few hours. I think there's up to like four bowl games now that have been postponed. Yeah, Mike uh, Kane's canceled. bailed. Oh, that's right. Now they got did they get replaced by Central Michigan? Did I see in that game? I I, I just know this that they they decided that now, here get this ninety nine percent of the team is vaccinated with boosters and they right. bailed. I'm like, yeah, what, what is just, that about? I really, Harry, I'm I don't want to make a political statement and I don't want to go because, you know, I always believe this. My platforms. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life and how to give shots and this and that, whether you should or not. I'm, that's not my deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, if you're telling me one thing, if you get a, if you get a shot, you get your booster mm -hmm. and you're vaccinated completely and you have a booster. Why are you bailing when you're coming down with a variant supposedly according to the government is not as potent as we had a year ago, right. and that you should be able to get through this. I see the NFL, and some of the other professional sports leagues now are backing off on the hoops that you have to jump through for you to mm -hmm. be able to play that particular weekend. Why are we going here with this? I mean, look, I know you have to side on the side of caution. I, I understand all of that. Well, if you're siding on the side of caution and you're getting the booster, I thought that was the caution. Yeah, that is the caution, right? Okay, so yeah. are, are we going to continue to go through this and move the yardstick every single month now? Because yeah, well, there'll be a new variant in a couple more months. I, I believe. Get this, and you know this. I I say this to everyone. Most Americans are not anti-vaccination. We've had like 16 vaccinations in our life: polio, smallpox, right. what have you, when we were young kids, and now all of a sudden. I think the only thing I want to know is, hey, man, give, give, give me a set of guidelines so we can all live through this and move through this because people are getting tired of it. doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. And now you're starting to get into the sports world here. If you notice this, though, it's not affecting the professional NFL teams, and it's surely not affecting most of the Southeastern Conference teams. These teams are going to play. I right. saw A&M bailed on the Gator Bowl. Yeah, They were like one of the only ones that did. But, man, this – it's really confusing right now, and it's really wrecking what is one of my favorite times of the year, bowl season. It is, and the other thing I just wonder is like if you're, you know, if, if you're all vaxxed up, boosted up, whatever you, you know, whatever maximum you got to be, and you're not symptomatic, why are you getting tested, bro? I think that's you should the, be allowed to play. Yeah, you exactly. want me to play? You know what? You want me to play with a bad knee, right? Or you want me to take coming off the concussion shots. list? You know, right, I just got right. it through the concussion protocol. Right, you know? and you want me to come out. Most boxers, when they get concussions, are out six months. An NFL guy's out three days. Yeah. And you want exactly. me to come back in four days and play in an NFL game? Mm -hmm. But you're telling me if I catch the sniffles, right. you're telling me that I can't play for that particular weekend? Right. It just doesn't seem to make sense. And by the way, the NCAA and the college football playoff need to have their head examined. So you see the new protocols? If one of the teams or if all the teams can't come forward and play for a national champion, Before you're going to vacate it? Yeah. Who gave you that right? I know. You know, for 127 years, we voted on who would be the national champion. Well, we're n why would you vacate it? Why wouldn't you just put it in the hands of the voters mm -hmm. and at least name somebody a national champion? You went through a regular season. Are you trying to tell me that the regular season didn't matter? And all those teams that put their asses on the line are not going to get a chance to win a national well, title. I guarantee Put it in you. the hands of the voters. Let them vote a title. And if it's split, who cares? I know. There was a couple of split national champions uh, years ago. Was Miami, it? Washington had right. a split. BYU I, and Georgia Tech, I think, split yeah, one yeah, year. Uh, no, no, no. It was, was Colorado. It Colorado. And Colorado. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, those two teams. And uh, yeah, Georgia Tech and Colorado split. That was Bobby Ross's team. They ended up splitting, and Miami and Washington ended up splitting. That's right. I think LSU also had a split somewhere in there. Yeah, uh, well, when they won the national champion, I, I don't. Have Cincinnati a would definitely claim national champion, and they'd have a, they'd have a parade like UCF did years ago when they went undefeated. Hey, I tell I you what, that. if it gets to a vacate, I'm all right with that. Giving yeah. myself a national title <laughs> ring. Uh, but I want to I want to see the games, and I know Me you too. do too. Um, but if you if you've done all the things that they've asked you to do and you're not feeling sick, I just don't understand why all the why all the testing. It's almost like okay, you failed the test, but you're not sick. 
Like, I just not, can't put two and two together. How about when they sat Beckham after playing on a Monday night? The guy obviously had it when he was playing, and then mm-hmm. the next day he comes down with COVID, they sit him, and you're like, wait a minute. He played with it. I, right. I just – the NFL wobbling. I really thought that the Eagles were going to get hosed in that whole thing too because, you know, this coming Sunday will be three divisional games in 13 days. Right. I think they were awful lucky to get that uh, by going into that – Three game stretch yeah. there, but I, I do, man. I think so. Do, what what bowl game? What what's your favorite bowl game? Mine's the Rose Bowl. Yeah, as far as tradition goes, yeah. I do like. To, like I'm gonna I'm gonna line up for that at four o'clock, four thirty in the afternoon. Uh, the grandeur of the, of that stadium, that just the scenery, the whole the whole thing is really cool. And Ohio State Utah is going to be a pretty good game too, if you ask me. Absolutely, uh, man. I, hey, my 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 story I told you with Woody, right? Dan, 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 yeah, Woody Hayes. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, Dan? I, I didn't like, know he had a lisp until you started doing your I, impression. I, I, Dan, did, did Woody? I, I met Dakota Bruce. Did not, I'm like, who <laughs> in the f is? Because Woody, this Woody Hayes. I'm like, what do you no way? This this is one of my boys over down at Burns' right. Tavern. Yeah. <laughs> it's the jerky boys. Hey, I, hey, here, hey, here's another recruiting one. So I get a call from um I get a call. I was I was gonna go to Maryland, but not really at first. So I get a call. Hey, Dan, hi, huh, this is um this is Bobby Ross. Somebody's gonna be calling you in a minute. I'm like, yeah, okay, great. So he goes, Hey, hey man, this is this is this is Randy White. I hung up on the fucker. Oh yeah, and, and he goes like, "Oh, he called me Terrapin and, alum, Randy yeah, White." But I, yeah, I went like this. Yeah. Since when does Randy White have a Texas draw? He's yeah. from Delaware because he's from <laughs> Delaware, man. I'm telling you. I mean, this guy, I this guy said, "Hey, we'd like you to come. To, we'd like you to come to uh, the University of Maryland and play uh-huh. some football." I'm like, D- "How does Randy White ha- see? This is why I don't believe you." Yep. How does Randy White have a Texas draw? Well, I've been out here a while now, so maybe it'd come down here in my Skeeter boat. Yeah, but I'm he like, had nah, that country on a boat Delaware right accent before that. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Yeah, but he, he totally but I went to, I went to Maryland thing. because he called me. Of course. Of course. You know you know that that's how Baldy ripped up his finger. What, against Randy? On Randy White's face mask. Oh, man. He got those it caught in the face are, mask. Those two guys are <laughs> They were boys, man, and like I t- hey, like I tell you all the time. Let me hang on. Baldy, every time he comes on the show, how's my girl doing, man? He yeah, dated I know, my wife. I, know, I, I got to punch him in his chin every time I see him. That <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> he probably gives you one of those laughs too. Oh no, he does too. He goes, "How's my girl doing?" I'm like, "Yeah, he's doing good, man." <laughs> all right, now every here's time the- I see my wife later on in the day, I go, "Hey, your boyfriend said I." Oh jeez. <laughs> Then again, yeah. after 33 years, she looks at me. She goes, really? I'm yeah. like, no, good. I got it. <laughs> Here's something I don't understand. And maybe you can figure this out. Rob Motti tweeted this uh, last night. I guess it was shortly after the game ended. A lot of people wondering why the 49ers have to win next week. If the Eagles beat Washington, Green Bay beats Minnesota, and the Niners lose, they play Houston. Then the Eagles lose to Dallas, Niners beat Rams, and the Saints win out. Philly, San Francisco, and New Orleans all finish at 9-8, and eight, and the Eagles would lose the three-way playoff. Why? Tiebreaker. I don't understand that. How would they, if they ended up with the same record as New Orleans and beat them head-to-head, how do they lose out? Is it the, It's got to be conference record because there's, there's parameters, Harry. I think it goes like this. Overall record, conference record, division record, then it goes to points scored, and then points allowed. Mm -hmm. I think there's like a scale that they're looking at. The team that has the best NFC record, I think, is the first tiebreaker. Then it goes to divisional record, because what's the Eagles' record inside the division right now? Uh, Let me check. I mean, because that that's going to be. I think that that is the second. No, overall is number one, conference, then divisional, then I think it's points scored and then points allowed. The Eagles are uh, two and two in the division and six and four in the conference. And what are what is San Francisco in the division? In their uh, division San- or in their and in, in, first in the conference? San Francisco in the conference is six and five. Okay, and how about only their division? One and four in the division. Wow. New Orleans is five and three in the division, 
Or no, two and two. Two and two in the division and five and five in the conference. Okay. Th- those are the two para- th- that's Those are the parameters in there. Whoever ends up, I think, with the best conference record, and if it's tied, then it goes to the division. I, I just I just, I just don't understand how head-to-head is no longer valid in, in a three-way tie. Like, yeah, the no, Eagles no. beat the Saints. How did I, how would the Saints get in ahead? It's stupid. The Saints are still in it after last night? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> the greatness of Ian Book, baby. Yeah. I have <laughs> hey, no I idea. Hey, I want to throw a stat at you here. Go ahead. Tell me who this is. 15 yards allowed. 11th in points allowed. And they are number two since week eight in run defense. Is it the Eagles? Yeah. And you have the number one. So let me ask you this, Harry. You have that working for. Now, look. If you're going to say they played against Stiffs, who the mm-hmm. Cowboys played? Who's the Cowboys' biggest victory? Uh, Got to look. Maybe against the Eagles back in week three. Okay. How many winning teams have they beaten, the Cowboys? I'm trying to think. I mean, they got destroyed by the Broncos. Yeah, they lost to Tampa week lost one. Lost to Tampa. They beat the Chargers week two. They beat Chargers the don't have a winning record anymore. Oh, uh, that's right. Because yeah, that's a horrible loss. Um, they beat the Patriots. They have, okay, there's one. All right. Um, they beat nobody else that has a winning record. Except the Eagles. So the Eagles yeah. and Patriots. Correct. Okay, that so currently the rest have of those a winning and, record. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, I'm like, all right. Well, I mean, everyone's, you know, throwing, you know, t, you know, they're they're throwing all these rose petals at the Cowboys here. But you know, the Cowboys when they play against good football teams, they yeah. lose. Yeah, the Cowboys have won four straight, and they beat a, a Saints team with a, a bad no quarterback, quarterback, and they beat Washington twice and the Giants. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, and, and okay. you know, they had their chance in Kansas City. And lost nineteen to nine. So they beat a bunch of temples. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take that personally. <laughs> I threw it at the person. I know. I know. Um, yeah, I mean they beat they beat the breaks off of, of Atlanta, as you would say, forty three to three. They're eight, um, they're seven and eight. Seven and eight. Uh they beat the Broncos thirty to sixteen. The Broncos are under five hundred too, aren't they? Yeah. Are they seven and eight as well? Yeah. And they beat the Vikings. Or no, they lost to the Broncos. I'm sorry. They got beat no, they by got the crushed by the Broncos yeah. at home. They were losing 30 to nothing in that game, if I remember. Yeah, they right. lost to the they, Broncos. Everyone kept going, they yeah. are going to turn this thing on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they got they got their they got their head pushed in in that game. That's what I'm saying. There's so many like bad to average to bad teams. It's hard to figure out who's really good. I'm sorry, That's but that's my the point. Matchups here, if the Cowboys get a football team that runs the ball and can run them off the field and keep Dak on the – you see, the reason I threw these stats at you, mm-hmm. isn't this the remedy against really big-time quarterbacks? If you've got a run-stopping football team and you've got a run-dominant team, well, to me, long play drives. It's going to give you a chance. It's going to put yeah. you in this. We're talking about 55 to 60 plays, which means – in theory, you're probably going to get seven offensive series a piece in a game like that. Mm-hmm. You've got to utilize it, and it's going to be a twenty to seventeen. It's going to be a twenty ten right. kind of football game. The but, Eagles have the remedy to beat teams because they can keep your star quarterback on the bench. They do, as long as Miles Sanders can play and maintain the football, and the quarterback has to get back to. Uh, taking a couple of runs, not and that, that and that, and he hasn't calling, done it the last two weeks. And that play call, it can't start out like he did against no. the Giants, where you're throwing the ball like that because you can't have three and outs and give the other team more series and more opportunities to have plays on you. You can't. I mean, look at the numbers in this game against the Giants and what they did. I didn't like the penalties, eleven for seventy-nine. Eleven, yeah, they got back to being a little careless. Yeah, and, and, and to me, I, because you know yeah. why, I think the Giants bring that out in you because mm-hmm. you saw them waving the white flag 
11 for 79 wasn't good. They ran the ball for 130 yards. They had 324 yards in total offense. Jalen was 17 to 29. 1025, which is had a great. bunch of drops, though. I mean, it, it could have been better. You think Dallas Goddard's a great player? I don't think he's a great player. I think he's good. I think lacks he has some way focus. too many drops for he me has to call lacks him. Some focus sometimes, yeah. Is that lack of reps? I don't know. I have no idea. Because I to me, he should be getting say, all the reps. I keep hearing people tell me now that he's really like you know he's like a future superstar, and I'm like superstars don't drop the ball. Yeah, I, I, I'm not seeing superstar. You think he's Zach Ertz? Uh, no, Ertz catches the ball. He just never did anything after he caught it. Yeah, yeah dude, <laughs> it was, his, yard, his yak was horrible. Zero. And, <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, if I was a defensive end, I would lick my chops line and oh, yeah. that dude. Man. Yeah, Goddard's I mean, let me a much say better this, blocker. He's not looking for contact. <laughs> no, Goddard's much more physical and much better blocker. Yeah, he's not yeah. looking for contact in that, thing, in that yeah. thing there. How do you think the year Howie's had? Uh, well, I mean, the draft pick of Devonte Smith looks really, really good. The draft um, pick of Jalen Hurts is. Would we agree? It's a two. It's a, if you and I. I don't wait. I don't want to speak for you. I when I saw that two, I went like this. You got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, no. you drafted that guy at two. Yeah. Oh, what are you high? Well, and now I look at it and go like this. He is a two. Yeah, he's a two. But the, the whole thing is, is he was not brought in here to be the guy that's the crazy thing the way this whole thing has transpired and now it's sort of you know put him in a position where they have to try to evaluate to see if he is the guy and he's playing his way into that you know he's not he's not there yet but i think he's getting his himself to at least give you next year how about now this he's made me feel really this good. way though harry that too was it that i'm not angry at that too anymore no i'm not Okay. No, you're right. You're right. I'm not angry at the two anymore because look, <laughs> if that guy gives you that kind, he's a Pro Bowl alternate. Yeah. I mean, you tell me that in his first year of starting, a guy's a Pro Bowl alternate, and he was a second round. Aren't draft we choice? all Pro Bowl alternates, though, Dan? I mean, you and yeah, I yeah, and yeah. The hey streamers. Harry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Harry. I, I mean, show this to everybody yeah. on my show. Here we go. Big Sills was on a on a Pro Bowl here, and I there keep this because. Big Seals is on a Pro Bowl ballot here. So beautiful. It, it look, if if, if Jalen could get on a Pro Bowl ballot, Big Seals could get on a Pro Bowl ballot. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, fair enough. Okay. I think hey. Xander's a Pro Bowl alternate too on special teams, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let me here, let me let me continue with um Sirianni here. Yeah. Um, was he right on Sirianni? Uh, I think the owner made that call, but He's looking like a competent NFL football coach who has command of his locker room. I mean, I'd be interested to see what he can do now, you know, next year, you know, with even more talent and, and you know, bulking up the defense a little bit. Maybe you give the, you know, the, the quarterback gets another year and see where see where it goes. I hate doing this because everyone's like, wait a minute, so you're not sitting here touting Howie Roseman as like executive of the year. Well, let me continue. Okay, so now he's he's worked it so that the Eagles now have three picks in the upcoming April draft, too. Right, right. He's doing this on the fly. And Landon Dickerson looks like a, a really good player, and, and which we knew would be if he stays healthy because he How had about the ability. this, too, the Darius Slay move? Uh, yeah, that looks like a really good one. Yeah, now we can't forget, though, about you know oh, some no. of the first-round you know, misses and the second-round misses. Absolutely. Everybody Absolutely. wants to forget about the left tackle that has been a bust. Nobody from, remember. They all remember Ragor. They don't remember the tackle. Okay. So you let know. me ask you this there. How do you think he's done in firing the head coach, moving Wentz, a guy you gave a contract extension to, and do you think Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson would have this football team this year with a better record? No, I can't say with a better record. I can't. Okay. I'd like I would have liked to have seen what Doug Peterson would have been able to do with Jalen Hurts, though. That was I I'm in, I was intrigued by the, the idea of that. I have no idea how it would have worked out, but I would have liked to have seen would it. Would you would you agree that if Howie gets to the postseason this year they win 10 ball games? That Nick Sirianni's probably going to be one of the top two candidates for coach of the year. Jalen Hurts is probably because, you know, Brady's not going to go. You know, Rodgers is not going to go. Probably mm -hmm. be in the Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Which I don't watch. <laughs> Who does? Yeah, I'd, right. rather, 
I'd rather play right. PlayStation. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Then yeah. That's what I think they should do is have like a PlayStation game. Like they Madden. should. Oh, Madden. Yeah, like a yeah, Madden. All thing. Madden. Hey, by yeah. the way, what'd you think of that thing? I didn't see it. Oh, you got to. No, and it's my bad. I I gave I threw the penalty flag on myself over over the weekend because I thought I had set the DVR that day. Oh. Leading Man. it was Christmas Day, leading into that Browns Packers game, and uh, me and the wife went away for Christmas Day to visit uh, family. I come back and it's three o'clock, and I look on my DVR and the red light is not on, and oh. I'm like, "Dude, I screwed up. Did I not set it?" I go and check, and sure enough, Madden it was almost over, and I had never recorded it. So then I immediately emailed my contact person at Fox. To saying you guys better be re-airing this thing before a playoff game in third. a couple of weeks. Well, the third, it's going to be available on streaming services, including ESPN Plus. Believe it or not, she got back to me immediately. So I'm, I'm gonna, ha- I'm gonna get it that way. Let me know because I know Jacob Bowman over there and all them dudes like Eric Shanks. I got to tell you a story here, real quick here. My my I John Madden story it. and how he helped me in broadcasting. So I start. I know you know this station. So I started working. And my first big gig was at KMBR in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. So I got the job. Was um, it Lee doing, Hammer? Was he the program director? He was, He used to get my wife water. Okay. Okay, Bob Agnew was my PD. Okay. Okay? okay yeah. So I'm doing updates. Agnew comes to me and goes, Cilio, you'll never fucking ever host a show on this station your entire life. So I'm doing updates. Okay, Bob. He's one of those kind of guys. He's a Tom Bigby kind of guy, if you get Uh my drift anyway, Yes, yes, yes. Hey, the light's on. Get off the damn phone with the guy. That's Bigby over there at IP, right? Two-minute rule. Two-minute rule. So Agnew's coming to me, and he goes, hey, man, this guy's not here, man. And, like, Pharrell's not here. You got to go on. It's because Scott was doing 6 to 10 at the time before he went to uh, do Pharrell on the bench. Mm-hmm. And so I go, okay, I get on here. I start doing this, man. I start going off and I didn't know shit. He goes, so you don't know anything, but you're great. So I start all of a sudden I get the job and, or no, I'm, I'm in the process of getting job. John Madden calls uh, Bob Agnew and a guy by the name of Tony Salvador, mm-hmm. who was a GM at a joint. It was owned by mm-hmm. Susquehanna. I never got why we got plates for Christmas gifts, but it was Susquehanna, Pfizer, whatever. They used to give us these dinner plates, a, a month's check in like these dinner plates. It was crazy. Huh. Madden called up and goes, this guy, hey, this guy silly is really the deal. So I went over to eat at his house in Blackhawk and mm-hmm. I met him in Virginia and he was just getting started with David Liskin and all the stuff with EA Sports. They were playing game together. Mm-hmm. And I got a chance to meet and be around Coach Madden. Man, it was just absolutely spectacular. I tweeted it out, by the way. And then I he introduced me to David Hill. David Hill and I are friends. And it was just a really great relationship. And I, co- if it wasn't for Coach, I don't think I'd get that Sports Phone 68 job. And then I ended no up going kidding. to Tampa, and I stayed there for 15 years in the morning drive at WDAE. But wow. it was really a great Great, great, great opportunity. And if it wasn't for Coach, I don't think I would have got the job. Oh, that's Boom. awesome. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, who's the guy that works with Ian Beckles down in Tampa? Uh, He's got like a, like Ron, a rock. Ron beat. Diaz. Yes, Diaz. Yeah, I used to, he used I used to, to be on Thunder. Dude, you get this. So you'll love this. So in the, in the in mornings, I was two. Bubba the Love Sponge was one. Mm-hmm. They had Ian was on. I mean, not Ian, but uh, Ron Diaz was on this thing called Thunder. That's and a music Jack station, and, right? Jack and Ted were on WFLA nine seventy. Mm-hmm. So every time, every morning, there's the four of us. We owned the we owned Tampa. We were we owned the top five slots every single book. Mm-hmm. So we're walking through the thing. Bub would go, "Hey, fuck you." I'd go, "Hey, fuck you." Or I'm looking over at Schnitt. Hey, fuck you. Hey, fuck. Oh, was, I, I never, ever, ever said anything positive to these guys. We don't, hey, fuck you. Hey, yeah. man. Morning. Fuck you. How you doing? <laughs> so you were all in the same building? All in the same building. Oh, man. Oh, me and Bubba, dude. I I, I, I take shit out of Bubba's like uh, studio. Where's, where, where's my show sheet? I'd burn it. <laughs> He'd come in, man. My mic would be all met. Oh, this is just unbelievably. Pranks. Just, Pranks everywhere, man. It was really, really a tough place to my 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 old uh, boss 
Randy Michaels would come in and get this dude. This guy had a giant like dildo around his neck. This is Randy Michaels, one of the greatest programmers of all time. Mm -hmm. Silio. Okay. No one wants to hear anything about in Detroit. Okay, this is when you're doing local radio. You, you, right. know, you start talking about something in Detroit. Everybody wants to know about what's going on in Ybor City. Right. That's when people come to Philly and they start talking about where like anybody goes on New York stations and they start talking about Baltimore. Mm -hmm. That's an automatic click. You know right. that in that right. city, man. You right. start talking anything other than Philly. Philly but in stuff, Tampa, man, it's different, though, isn't it? What? In Tampa, it's different, though, isn't it? Because, yeah, you got like people from Chicago. There's a lot of Philly. I'll tell you this: When the Flyers used to show up down there, mm -hmm. and they used to play at the Cow Palace, I think they got sixty-five thousand people in there one year when Lindros rolled in there. Wow! And we used, oh my God, what a Philly fan base that is down in that. That was before they built that arena. Yes, yeah. right. That's one of the best arenas. On the, every time the Flyers or the Red Wings or any of those like teams, like the Rangers, come in there, man, mm -hmm. the, place, the place is always packed. Yeah. FedEx Field is going to be packed with Eagle fans this weekend. That is <laughs> hey, a well, lock. hey, oh, oh, and by the way, yeah, well, I mean, Daniel Snyder, I'm sure that you could get those tickets for about 15 bucks on oh, yeah. StubHub. <laughs> no, no question about it. All right, we're going to take is he, is he a worse owner than James Dolan? Um, well, that's a good question because they're very, very similar, very similar, and their their success rate. I mean, what what is the what have the Knicks and Rangers done in the last, I don't know, 20 years? Well, no, well the Rangers at least have gone to like a – They've uh, gone to the cup final. They've gone to the cup yeah. a few times. Yeah. Yeah, but they've my gone God. to the cup a few times. But, hey, the only reason that the Rangers were halfway decent was because Glenn Sather was hired by James Dolan, believe it or not, and he was the same guy that set the – He was uh, the Edmonton in guy. In Edmonton. Yeah. When they were building that great dynasty there. Mm -hmm. and. That's the only reason. And then, you know, he passed it on. But it was Glenn Sather that set up the Ranger dynasty. Yeah, and Elaine Vigneault was one of the coaches that took him to the cup finals. That's right. That's right. That's and right. And now he's unemployed. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's still <laughs> cashing Flyers checks. Let's put right it that on, way. Dude. All right, we'll take a quick time out. Be back in three for the final hour of the middle here on a Tuesday on Jacob Media YouTube channel. This is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. 
turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resorts. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Welcome back to the middle. Hour number two of the show, Dan Cilio, Harry Mays. And I just got a text message from a number that I don't recognize, Dan. I love this. Uh, this came through three minutes ago. It says, hi, I'm Mike, and I would like to chat about, and then he gives my address, and our fair proposal. I give you quick call when you're available. No fees. So apparently somebody wants to offer me a proposal to buy my house, Dan. Whoa. No fees. Over a tech over a text? Yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. Guess yeah. what? Tell him I got a piece. Holy cow, man. <laughs> I got some land in South Florida. You know, it's in the swampy in area. In the swampy the area, yeah. It's in the Everglades. Even, but hey, you know, we'll get there. <laughs> near near Bell Glade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right there, right there, Bell Glades. By the way, little grass on the roof, but it's all good. It works. Uh-huh. Good high school football program over oh, there. Oh my Bell god, Glade. right. You I mean you only have to have 33 players in this one? It's all right. good. <laughs> Wow. Isn't so you just I, I get a random I text the it. other day from somebody going, hey, hey, Dan, we'd like you to, you know, come on the show. And, uh-huh. you know, I go. So what is the show? He goes, I'll let you know when you call. And I'm like, Bro, I can't even believe I responded to you. OK, what, what's that about? Oh, no, man. I mean, I have no today. The Internet and everything with how people are so connected today. Mm hmm. I mean, I get emails. I, the people that I block, or yeah. now that I've learned a new thing on Twitter, is mute, which is great. They oh yeah, know you're blocking them now. Right, which is great. Um, I, I I get people offering me everything every single day to do something because mm-hmm. they know how much of a lunatic I am. So they'll go, "Oh, she'll so jump on," and I go, "Hey, eh, you know, I did work on Wall Street. Did you know I was a stockbroker?" No, I didn't know that. I was really? a stockbroker for Bear Stearns. No shit. When was this? Right get after this. the uh, Tampa Bay days? Get, get this. As soon as I left professional football, uh-huh. I got my Series 7. Okay. And I went and he, watch this. Here's my pitch. Hey, this is Dan Cilio from Bear Stearns. Guy goes, Bear Stearns? What's that? I go, Circus Act? He goes, no, sir. Let me tell you something here. I know you probably deal with Merrill Lynch every single day. Merrill Lynch picks about 16 stocks a year. It goes like this to you. Pick one. You know what mm-hmm. we do? We pick three. You know why? We've never had a losing quarter in 68 years we've been in business. We give you the three best. He goes, give me a, give me a for instance. I go, okay, Trojan rubber. Guy starts laughing. I go, albeit one of the biggest tragedies in our world has been the AIDS epidemic, right? Mm-hmm. You think anybody gave a shit? that that stock was trading at 234 when the CDC came out and said it was a national epidemic. That stock went to 17-fold. You think anybody cared? And he went like this. Or I go, here's another one. You see a great-looking chick walking down the street. You look over at your wife and go, honey, she's beautiful. Don't you jump on it? And the guy goes like this. All right, kid, this is a pretty good. So I did this song and dance for these guys, man. I did very well on it, but (laughs) I'm sitting in front of a Quotron going, but you know what really helped me in radio? Mm. The thousands of leads I was going through because you constantly have to talk to people. Right. You have to be Cold quick call. on your feet Yeah, with these guys because these guys are sharks, you know? So it helped me. And I said, well, my my degree, I was either going to be basket weaving or broadcasting. So I, I went broadcasting and <laughs> my wife goes, why don't you just use your degree, dummy? And so I got in it and that's how it all started. But I, yeah, I, I got my Series 7 and worked on Wall Street for a bit. I even went and a guy named Ace Greenberg, who was Trump's number one investor guy. Mm-hmm. I went to New York. I sat there. Then I started doing acquisition and mergers. We were involved in the Sarah Lee stuff and all that. It was it was wow. pretty cool, man. Yeah, I was I was there in the boardroom with Ace Greenberg and everybody at Bear Stearns. Now, what year was this? Or oh, what God, years? this had to be the early 2000s. Okay. 
Okay. Um, wow. Maybe, right? Maybe like 96 or something like that. Because I show up, you know, Wall Street was a big thing going on TV. You know, hey, that guy, Michael Milken, worked for that company That's too right. at one time. That's right. Wow. I didn't know that, man. I learned yeah, something yeah. new every day I work with you. Yeah. Did you know this? Because this, this got by me. And I got this sent to me by a Twitter follower. He gives me the link to this blog that says ESPN's Chris Mortensen said Sunday that Gardner Minshew went into Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni's office after the week 13 game against the Jets and asked him man to man what he needs to do to take the starting job from Jalen Hurts. Sirianni told Minshew, quote, not going to happen, end quote, because the team was committed to Hurts. Did you know that? No. See, I don't watch the ESPN pregame shows. I, I try not to oh, watch anything ESPN. Uh, the only thing I watch on ESPN is live programming. Or it's like, terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. That but, that that NFL countdown show is awful. Yeah, but um, apparently Mortensen said this. What do you make of that? Let me dissect that. So Minshew, after he played against the shitty Jets, walked into the. This is probably why the Jaguars traded. Well. It's funny you say that because the next paragraph says back in the offseason, the then Jags QB was quite graphic in declaring his disinterest in accepting the number two role in Jacksonville uh, behind Trevor Lawrence. No, no, no. I don't want to. I don't want to. Throw shade on a guy who wants to start. Right, right. He's, but com what he's you a competitor. Can't do is you can't have an upsetting locker room and right. a quarterback room knowing Jalen Jalen is probably the perfect personality to be able to deal with that yeah and this tells me even more about the character wow I'm going to bring this up later on this is really something here and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something Jalen probably appreciates Minshew's attitude because let's not forget he was absolutely embarrassed nationally okay when he was taken out of that national championship game for Tua Tug of Viola, then mm -hmm. had to go back into the SEC championship game to save Saban's ass. Mm -hmm. So he's been through the ringer himself. So he probably appreciates it. If that's Fredo Wentz, oh. we're talking that all oh, over he, again. He goes into a ball. And he goes yeah. into a ball. Right. And so yeah. Jalen probably has kept that locker room. But for... Nick Sirianni, to say that, there's no question they're bringing him back. I think it says more about Hurts' future here than it does anything else. They're committed to him? Yeah. Okay. Well, how long are you committed? There's obviously – they're not just committed to him for this year then. They're committed to him for the next couple of years. And they're probably trading Minshew in the offseason or oh, on draft day. And you'll day. probably get something decent for him. I know. Okay? I know. I could see you getting a three or four for the kid. Right. He's a – hey, have you we give not up learned a one sixth? thing – wasn't it a sixth round pick? Yeah. Have yeah. we not learned one thing? You have to have today a quality backup quarterback because he's going to be called on at some time to go in and have to win you an important football game. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to me, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they are very important. A guy like Minch, you could play 17 years in this league, bro. Yeah, he can. Yeah. And I can't believe, though. So he went in there and he basically just called out the head coach and basically the front office and Howie Roseman and said, Hey, I need, I want this job. Right. What do I got to do? What do to I get have it? to do? And they said nothing, nothing. Nope. It's not, it's not up for debate. It's not it's happening. Not. Now here's what he said on this podcast. Minshew apparently he went on a, a podcast with Dove Kleiman. I don't know who Dove is, <laughs> uh, but he it's said in this country, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's um, he says, I'll say this man. In preparation for the competition, he's talking about being in Jacksonville. I haven't taken a shit in weeks because number two isn't it not an option for me. End quote. <laughs> number two is not an option. He he's quite a character, again. man. Jesus. <laughs> this guy needs his own show. Oh, That's my what he God needs. almighty. He's going to be enormous, man. I mean, <laughs> give him a radio show, man. Holy you, cow. You know who would hate him is Bill Parcells. Oh, yeah. 
He does. He would not like this. No, kind no, of he would. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Uh, like, God, can, can you imagine Minshew walking in in the Top Gun getup, getting ready for his first start on Harry Armpit's team? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, tank top with, Look, with looking like an unmade bed, <laughs> right? <laughs> with the Ray Bans on yeah. and the and leather yeah, jacket. The, 19, the 1996 Ray Bans. He right. walks in there and he goes like this: "A hey, scooter, listen, or uh, Nick." I I um I need to win this job. How do I get this job? You can't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, hey, hey, you, you, it's one thing too, right, Harry? Right. To walk in and go, you're thinking so high of yourself. Mm -hmm. You think you have a shot, and then the coach goes, "Hey, kid, sit down. You don't have a chance for this job." <laughs> right. Well, yeah, it's it's like you know being on in the in the evening hours of of a radio station and <laughs> sitting down getting your once a month review with the program director saying, Hey, what do I need to do to crack the midday lineup? I mean, it's just Kid, you're like, you're on it all here. Right. Hey, the overnight guy that does two o'clock to right. six o'clock in the morning yeah. walks in and goes, Hey, I want to replace Angelo. Right. Um, we're not going there. Yeah. Are we <laughs> just get out of here? Oh, <laughs> uh, I thought it's always the, oh, Hey, isn't it always to the guy two to six? Hey kid. It's not happening. <laughs> Two to six in the overnight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> Sorry, oh. I had to. Oh, my God. I thought that I, – I can't believe that that hasn't gotten more run here. How locally. long has that quote been out? It's I don't, I've, I don't know when the quote exactly took place. Uh, you're talking about the number two quote, right? Not yeah. just going to Sirianni. Uh, but, I mean, we haven't even heard about this locally. Holy cow, man! Yeah. Hey, do you? Do, is there a part of you that likes it? Oh, they, it's entertaining, and I I love the moxie that the guy has. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, why not? Why not try to call your shot? Because you know that it, it at some point, if you find out you're not even in the running for it, there you're going to request request the trade, right? I haven't taken a number. Yeah, two in a num weeks. number two is not an option. <laughs> Hey, know this. I don't sit down when I pee. Right. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. I'm on an all liquid diet. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, I'm so hungry, man. Did you see how I showed up? The Chet's bumps with my pop. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow, man. Yeah. Hairy armpits, throwing oh, yeah. the ball around the Meadowlands. Oh. How do you think he would do running this team, though? I don't know. Um, he kind of reminds me of that. Who's that? Um, what was the kid in uh, Remember the Titans, the quarterback? He had the Sunshine? Nickname, Sunshine, something. Yeah, he's just like, kind of like, reminds me of like an older Kenny Stabler, a younger yeah. Kenny oh, no, Stabler dude. It's more Kenny Stabler. Yeah, or, Stabler. Or better yet, it could be more of a Blanda. You know, smoking cigarettes on the sidelines <laughs> there, scratching your nuts, well, you Blanda, know? Blanda looked like he was about 70 years old when he was playing still hey, at the when, when they put a picture up, of, of George Blanda when he was 44 and they put a picture of Brady up. I was like, that's George Blanda at 44. He looks like he's 84. I know. Yeah. Brady looks like he's 25. I know, man, that guy, you think if they win the Super Bowl, you think he bows out or do you think he comes back? Boy, that's a good question too. I would think he'd probably want to come back. <laughs> I mean, Eight's not enough, right? No, I know. I know. But I'm just saying if he wins it at 43 and 44, He's See, gonna he's gonna think he can win it at forty five. Here here's the problem Brady has right now. He doesn't know how to exit the game. He doesn't know how to exit it, and he mm -hmm. doesn't realize the the divorce that you don't want. Every football player goes through a divorce of the game, and you know what, Harry? It's a forced divorce. Mm. It's never something that both parties agree to. Right. This you very rarely get to leave on your own terms. You don't ever get – right. When yeah. Elway bowed out, everyone thinks Elway – if you remember that press conference, Elway goes, it's just not enough of an offseason for me to get my body in shape. I can't in any way get my body in shape. I have to retire. I'm not healthy. And so he had to leave the game. Okay? Same thing with – but Brady doesn't know how to exit this thing. And he, he's, he doesn't want to let it go because – Winning is such a drug, and the game itself is such a drug. 
dude, the competing that you do with yourself, it's more so than anything you do on the field. It's the thing that you get up when the lights aren't on you, Harry, and no one's watching you. You're standing in the rain. You're in mud puddles. You're running 40-yard dashes. You're mm -hmm. lifting when no one's there. It's 630 in the morning. You know, champions are made when the lights aren't on. Champions are made when you're sitting there when nobody is watching you. And to give all that up and all the things that you have accomplished in your life, it's such a routine he's in. I just don't think he knows how to exit the game. Yeah, yeah, and I, I tend to agree with you now. Like oh. when you look at when you look at Ben Roethlisberger, Roethlisberger's eating like uh, corny dogs, <laughs> and he's eating like like you know French fries and Big Macs and Happy Meals. <laughs> yeah, he knows how he's leaving the game, right. fat and out of shape. Yeah, he was Brady, with me. You know, I mean. He was that with me last with, night at Chickie and Pete's eating crab fries yeah. and uh, boneless wings. Yeah, he yeah he's in the Oakland area of Pittsburgh going, hey, man, I got this thing down, man. I got a bar, and I'm going to eat hot dogs and fries. Dude, I'll tell you, he's painful to watch. He is. That, right that's now. the worst Steeler team I've seen that oh, Mike Tomlin has ever had. Brutal. Do you know it's the worst defense they've had since 1954? 54? Yeah. Really? Steeler, wow. Steeler, uh, hey, a Steeler defense. With Cam Hayward on it too, who's mm -hmm. having a Pro Bowl season is crazy. Yeah, and that and Watt is great, but he's always banged up. Like it, he, it, they can't play the run. No, he's always banged up. That guy, and the guy, I mean, to his credit, he's got broken ribs. He plays through stuff as best he can, but he's always coming off the field. Um, yeah, old Cole on the stream. You are correct. He said Minshew's quote was on Chris Long's podcast. Dove Kleiman was the guy who tweeted it. But it did come from Chris Long's podcast called Greenlight. Huh. So oh that's where God. Minshew was, a guest. Okay. So he had Minshew on, Chris. Yeah. How about and that? He just starts, so he just started barking about the organization. I'm sure they're not happy about that because uh, you know how they are. I'll say this, man. In preparation for competition, I haven't taken a shit in weeks. Because number two isn't an option for me. Can you imagine oh, getting that quote rattled off on your podcast? How about if you're a hey, wait? How about if you're the Eagles and you read that? So this yeah. guy's talking about taking a shit on who? <laughs> yeah, no, no that, that was Odell Beckham Jr., wasn't it? That oh yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, no, no, right. Yeah. Hey, speaking of that, what do you make it a storyline going? Who would you rather have right now, Jalen Hurts or Baker Mayfield? Oh, Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Baker I've Mayfield seen enough was a of number Baker. one overall pick. I've seen enough of Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Dude. I was not that big of a fan of his coming out of Oklahoma, to be honest with you. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. You know why? Because yeah. I think he's a high school quarterback. Mm -hmm. Always ready to blame somebody else. It's always somebody else's fault. It's yeah. His, you know, everyone keeps going, well, he's had four different coaches. Yeah, because he's run them all out of there. How did he get that commercial uh, campaign? Funny, every time I see that, that progressive insurance spots, you know what I think? He's got Tom Brady's fame. Mm -hmm. and Tim Couch's ability. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's good. That's who he is. I have no I – mean, I, I mean, when he came out of college, was was he really that big a name, Baker Mayfield? I mean, the, the biggest thing I remember of him doing was beating Ohio State and planting the flag at midfield. Do you remember that deal? <laughs> <laughs> that was actually kind of cool. It was cool way, because if you remember, Ohio State had shit on Oklahoma down yeah, in Norman. Right. The year before, and that's kind of why he went out there and did it. Or how yeah. about when he was going after Hugh Jackson on the sidelines after Hugh got canned in Cleveland? Remember, he went over, stared him down, gave him oh, that. I don't, shit. I don't remember that. Yeah, remember dumb, uh, Marvin Lewis hired Hugh after he got fired, put him on the staff, and he's over there. And after they beat uh, the Bengals, he went over there and he's staring him down, going because, like, you know, it was all after that hard knock shit. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. remember him doing that, but now that you brought it up, I, I, think I remember. He's a clown. That. Yeah, he is. He is. He 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 he's a worse version of no, he's a little better version than Manzel. Yeah, he's better than Manzel. He's better than Manzel. Yeah, Manzel was a total fraud. Oh, yeah. An absolute bad. fraud. I can absolutely. still remember him though, uh playing Alabama that after I remember where I was. I was watching it at my other house in Phoenix. I voted for the guy for the Heisman. Did you? Yeah, I voted for. I thought he was great that year, man. Yeah, so. yeah, he was. That, I mean, yeah, that was, was great. That was I, was it, in, it was in Alabama. It was too. in Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, as far as uh, bowl game watching, you said Rose Bowl is your favorite. Uh, but how will you go about on New Year's Eve day uh, getting set for these national championship semifinals? I mean, are you fired up about these games? Or I am. 
because uh, I want to see what Cincinnati looks like on a national scale. And I tell you what, I like Fickle. So do I. So I, do I. I th- get. Do you know the story of him not getting a Notre Dame job? Uh, so Notre no, Dame I don't went know the story. Him. Hey, Notre Dame went to him and goes like this. Hey, we'd really love to have you as the um, uh, the uh, head coach of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. You know what he said? He goes, I can't leave my guys. We're getting ready for the semifinal. Mm-hmm. Um, if we want to do this, we're going to do this after the semifinal game. Biggest and, game in program history by far. Right. So, yeah. I'm not I'm not bailing on these right. guys. And so I like him even more now. They didn't want to wait because early signing date was the following week, if you remember right. 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 Well, which I hate that early signing. Me date, too, that because they moved it, it up now early. it throws everything into chaos here with yeah. these coaches. But he kept to his guns, man. And to me, if I'm a future program looking at how this guy's handled himself, yeah, that's exactly, man. It's all about the kids. And so he sat there and look what he's done. He's beat Notre Dame already. Yep, in I Notre mean, Dame his program. Yeah, they don't play on a weekly basis top programs but i'll tell you what when they get into those games they're winning games and i want to see what that team looks like on Mm -hmm. a national scale and i've been a big proponent of this the last non-power five team to win a national title was byu Mm -hmm. that was in 85 okay okay and so 84 85 somewhere in there and so for me this is the first time that a chance that a non-power five team has a chance to win a national title I think Alabama's going to run them off the road at the end of the game. I think yeah. probably in the second half, they probably their their depth kills them. Mm-hmm. But um, it would I wouldn't be shocked if they're in that ball game for a little bit. The other game that's intriguing yeah. is the Michigan. That's the game I'm really looking for. Georgia to game. You know, we were told all year long how great Georgia was, and Alabama went in there and just bit slapped them mm-hmm. and really showed everybody that hey, guess what? You got to win a. You got to beat the king before you can call yourself the king. That Bryce Young was unbelievable in that game. How about that kid, man? Yeah. Kid's yeah. now a Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. He's going to be a national. The guy makes a million dollars a year now with the nil loss. With the nil, yeah. Unreal. Unbelievable. And I want to see, though, because this is the first year that I think Harbaugh has a team. And I'll tell you what, I think they're pretty competitive in their lines, D line and O line. That looks like a Southeastern Conference offense and defensive line. That kid Hutchinson can pass, rush the passer. Oh, man. As a matter of fact, dude, so I wouldn't the mind other him kid. on the Eagles. So can the other kid on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, the Nigerian kid. Yeah. He, he's spectacular as well. OJ I, would, Boo I wouldn't or something. mind that Hutchinson guy being one of the Eagles selections. Well, he's going to be top three. They, they won't be able to get up high enough to get him. You think he goes – I, I he probably does go yeah. end up going that high. I yeah. think that kid Thibodeau is probably going to be the first pick in a draft if that were – me, I, I, but that's the first. And plus, I want to see Harbo coaching a game like that. Would I be shocked if Michigan beats them? I wouldn't be. Okay. No. Cause Kirby's smart for whatever reason, man. He gets very conservative, man. Man, that, that that's her man. You couldn't drive yep. a nail through it. You're, you're I mean, exactly he, they, right. They get tight. And I'm not sold and, you know, on the quarterback. Think I don't either. think they're sensational here no. on offense. I agree. I'm not sold on the quarterback at all. Yeah. And I don't it, think they're know. sensational on offense. I think Michigan's going to get that uh, that running back back too. Yes, um, the the one of their two backs was who's been injured for the last couple of weeks. He's yeah, not be... that big kid that they have there. I forget the kid's name here now. Oh, it just slips my mind here. Quorum, he made or Quorum or something like that. They were they're, they're, I, I like the whole I like the whole demeanor. They I think Michigan's going to get. How about this? I'll still take Georgia. I think it's going to re- be a repeat of the SEC title game. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to really know that winning the SEC is tougher than winning a national title. If Georgia gets to the title game, Harry, winning yeah. the SEC title is tougher to win than winning the national championship because if those two teams make it back to the title game again and they faced each other in uh, the SEC championship game, you're going to know. The, the SEC is like the Premier League now. All right. Okay, they're in like soccer, the Premier yeah. League in soccer now yeah. because you know it's them and then everyone else. Right. Yeah. Blake Corum is the Blake Corum, the, the running yep, back. Great player. Yeah. yeah the uh, the the quarterback at Michigan isn't is pretty good too. McNamara. I don't know that he's a, a going to be a pro or anything, but as far as a college quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny. The Michigan quarterback that everyone hated was Brady and Brady's turned out to be like, right. I mean, even Lloyd Carr hated the guy. They were trying to give it to Drew Henson and right. guys Drew like Henson's Brian Greasy. from my hood, man. Drew Henson grew up about five minutes from where I was grew he up. Was he a Yankee for a little yeah, bit he, in the minor leagues? Well, no, 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 I'm thinking of the other guy. Yeah. Henson was the Yankee. He was the baseball player. 
Yeah, did he play like three years with the Yankee he minor did. league team in Columbus or something? I actually like think that? he might have been on the major league roster for a little okay. bit too. And then and and then and he ended up going to Michigan and Carr loved him. I I because you know hey you know Brady Brady has a national title ring. He was on that champion split team Michigan team when Greasy was the quarterback. When Greasy was yeah. the quarterback. He was on that team. Yeah, wow. he was on that national championship team. Yeah, Chad Henney's the kid. Chad that's Henney, that's from, the he's guy. from my yeah, they, he's from my they area. They loved Chad Henney in that yeah. organization. They didn't really like Brady. Yeah, they didn't think much of Brady in that organization. Hey, how about the whole thing too with Joe Burrow? Can you imagine being Ohio State? And I don't know what you think of Justin Fields. I think I told you when I first came on this uh, the, this network. I went like this. I don't know. I don't. I I I don't see it. I just. In 137 years, Ohio State's never produced an NFL quarterback that was worth a shit. Yeah, and Mike I just Tom find, Zach. Right, never but get Mike. this. They had the guy in the room in Joe Burrow, and they told him he wasn't yeah. good enough. How crazy is that? They told him that Haskins was better. Right. And he yeah. goes to LSU, and now look at this guy. They it's, had the guy in the building. It's incredible. It really is. And, they, and he's from Ohio. I know. I know. I know. And two two other kids just transferred out of Ohio State, too. One went That's to right. Texas, and right. I forget where the other where the other kid went. I think maybe Florida. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's crazy because uh, Fields was a Penn State kid at first. He oh, committed I didn't know to that. Penn State, and then ended up at Georgia, and then left Georgia to go to Ohio State. But he was a Penn State guy first. I did not know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this: This coming off season. What's going to be the best landing spot for Doug Peterson? Mm -hmm. Now, is it all on the pretense of the quarterback or because, look, people are going like this in Chicago. To me, if I'm Doug, I'd take that Raider job. The reason I take that Raider job, I'm going to have a lot of say, and I got Derek Carr. You know, he's number two in passing yards. Yeah. And you with all May the chaos. Mayock would stay? Would you keep Mayock? No, I, I want a clean slate. If I was Doug, I want I don't want any Howie Rosemans in my world. Okay. No disrespect to Mike Mayock. He may know him. I don't know. You know, from their playing days. I don't know if he knows him. So there could be some connection there. Mm -hmm. But if I was Doug, I want a complete slate. And I would go like this. I, I want I want it clean. I don't I don't want to have any old baggage from anything. I want to start anew. I want a clean house here. Right. And I want to have say, and I want to have say who my GM is. And so what I would do then is I would take that – dude, Derek Carr has kept the Raiders in the playoffs with all the chaos. Now, right. people are talking Jacksonville, okay? What about Minnesota? They missed the playoffs. Are you okay playoffs. going there with Kirk – see, Rick Spielman's a great GM. Mm -hmm. Rick Spielman's – and you, so you're saying you think that um, Mike, Mike Zimmer's out? I think Mike Zimmer's out if they miss the playoffs. Yeah, I do. Um. I wouldn't go to Chicago. I wouldn't either. What about Seattle? It, but if, Russell if, Wilson, if Russell Wilson stays, does Carroll leave? Okay. Well, if Carroll leaves, don't you think Russell leaves? Yeah, that could that could be one one in the okay. Same. Don't you? Un, un, unless Doug was able to talk him into staying, mm -hmm. you think Seattle's a good job without Russell Wilson? No, probably right. not. Okay. Unless the New York you get, job, is unless you can get one of these other veteran quarterbacks. You know, like to move, you know, to be moved up there. I think there's going to be quite a bit of movement. How about the giant job? Um, no O line. Yeah, no O line. I don't like the quarterback. We're firing the GM. Dave Gettleman will be Gettleman's fired. out. Yeah, Gettleman will be out. Uh, he had five years to build an O line, and what I saw, yeah, zero. Was terrible. Yeah, terrible. I don't like the quarterback either. I think no, you got to you got to totally restart. Yeah, so can, you're not going to convince one of the premium guys to go in there because it's just not going to happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was talking about Jimmy G possibly going to Pittsburgh or going somewhere he's hurt again. You see that he yeah. had a fractured hand now or something? Yeah, and he's got, he's got a torn ligament in his throwing hand, okay. right? I, I'm, you know what? I'm so done with him. As yeah. much as I think he's decent, I, I'm going to look like this. Look, man, no way. I, I'm not. I'm not. I can't. I can't. Availability is as important as, you know, being able to 
evaluate a player, his availability has got to be involved with that mm -hmm. whole essential taking a look at a player's talent. I mean, it's got to be part of the equation, and he he just can't give you 16 games. You know, the only other quarterback I can remember like him was McMahon. McMahon never played mm. a 16 game no? season in his entire career. Never. Wow, I didn't know that's that. why Jim. His stats, and that's why his career was always, you know, at an influx because sometimes he would look like a Pro Bowl guy, mm -hmm. but he would never had a 16-game season in his entire NFL career. I don't. Even, I think he was a backup when he came to Philly. Yeah, he was. He was. He got a bunch of starts, though. Uh, yeah, but he was a backup. Right. Yep. Um, I would say, yeah, you're right. In Las Vegas or Minnesota, I think would be the two best spots. Yeah. Yeah, and, and do you think he now. gets back into coaching this year? I think so. Yeah, because I think I think there's going to be about six, seven opening jobs, isn't there? Always. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know how much movement though that you're going to see. I mean, look, Kyle Shanahan. I, I I've said this too. Kyle Shanahan has another losing season. Boy, mm. I keep looking at Kyle Shanahan, going, when is it? Again, I mean, he got to the Super Bowl. Yeah, okay. outside of that year, his numbers are bad. Terrible. Really and I'm bad. like, you fired Doug Peterson, and he had some of the greatest time and greatest era of football in Eagle history, and you fired yep. that guy's ass, and you're keeping Kyle Shanahan because of his last name? Yep. I mean, look at the guys in that division now that are starting to move ahead of him. Sean McVay is by far a better coach. Yep. The kid Kingsbury has turned that Arizona Cardinal franchise completely around. Yeah, how did they lose three straight though? I think they got Murray's Dallas more than week. you think. They got Dallas. And when they this lost week. Hopkins, yeah, that's true. He's been out. He's been out for a while. When they, yeah, Hopkins has been out those three games. I think. they actually survived. Didn't they win two of the three games that Murray missed? Yeah, didn't he go up to San Francisco with the backup quarterback Colt Brennan Colt, or Colt, Colt McCoy, McCoy? Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then they they went up to San Francisco and won that game, if I'm not mistaken. They play Dallas this week. That's probably, I mean, that's one of the bet, best oh, games of the week. That's going to be an interesting ball game. Yeah. No, they actually, yeah, they beat San Francisco at San Francisco 31-17, to and it was Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. Yep. Okay. That's pretty amazing. Colt McCoy. Yeah. yeah no, no, I think he's a heck of a coach, but – yeah, I think Doug gets back in it, but you know, you keep hearing people in Chicago going, Oh, yeah, it's a great place for him. Oh. And I, I'll never forget, I told Dave Wants that when he took that bear job, I go, Coach, they have so much more control over the personnel in Chicago. And what did they do? They went out and got that guy from UCLA and I case Keenum or whatever. No, what was his name? Oh, no. Um, you're talking about in the uh, McNabb draft. Yeah, Cade McNown. Cade McCown, McCown or McNown? McNown, McNown. He was so yeah. freaking awful. Oh, man. terrible. I'm like, then they had to go get the old Detroit quarterback. They brought his ass in there. And Kramer. Like, Kramer. Kramer. They yeah. brought him in. And yeah. I'm like, man, if you don't have a quarterback, you're not going to win in this yeah. league. And so if I'm Doug, I pick my spot. But I look, Shade Khan has got a lot of dough. He's one of the richest owners in the league, the owner of the yep. Jaguars. Eight billion dollars or something. And how about Carolina? I think Matt Rule's not going to be there at the end. I think, think so. that owner, and they gave him a six year, sixty three million dollar deal. I thought it was a seven year deal. Seven year deal? I think you got a seven year deal. Yeah. I think yeah. it was ten. It wasn't it ten per? I thought it was it's, like it's 10 a per. lot. It's a lot. Okay. I'll but look it up during the I break. I think he is the richest owner, him and Stan Kroenke. Is that the guy in Carolina? Yeah, the guy in Carolina is a hedge fund owner. Oh, wow. And that guy's got the attention span of a gnat. All right. <laughs> and so, you know, hey, by the way, um, Deshaun Watson, big yeah. market, no market? Um, Philly would be interested, despite what might, you might think about Jalen Hurts. If he's available, they'd be interested. Miami would be interested. And here's there's got to be another team or two. You're probably going to think I'm crazy when I say this. I don't care about the – I wait, let me hear it. I don't want to say I don't care. I'm not as concerned about the sexual assault cases. And I'm going to tell you why. If the league's not – Right. And the Houston authorities aren't, and the district attorney aren't, and he's not been in jail. He's not been arrested. Right. 
He's still getting paid. And he's actively on the roster. Right. Making $38 million to sit there and chew ice. Mm -hmm. It's a good gig if you can get it. Why should you be worried? Right. I agree. The league's not worried. If the if the league hasn't been able to find something, the he's way he's not on the ex- commissioner's exempt. No, he's list. not on any exempt list. No, nope. I know it's a it's a really strange situation. Okay, so so but, but but we're led to believe that these cases. I don't know about you, Harry, but if I heard that there was a sexual predator in my community with twenty two sexual assault cases, the chances of that guy walking the street working at McDonald's is pretty low. Mm-hmm. This guy's a high-profile NFL guy that shows up to an NFL team. Doesn't that rub? You know, remember Protect the Shield? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, how does that look? I don't. I can't explain it, man. I really can't. And he's well, making well, that. He's making that kind of money. Thirty. Thirty-eight million. They wow. signed. Remember? Remember what? Remember what the whole thing was? He signed that brand new five-year contract extension within a matter of a couple months after Hopkins was traded. To um, Arizona. Hopkins was traded to uh, what you call it, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, hmm. Xander's in my ass right now. Same. All right, we got to take a break. Uh, All right, we're we'll just because be you know why we're just sitting here talking sports. Give I know. I'm here. sorry, Xander. We're back in three right here on the middle. This is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. Turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Uh, welcome back to the middle. Final segment here on a Tuesday. Now, tomorrow, Barrett is back. I think he's up in New York City today. Did you get in his ass for that, um, getting uh, Seth on? 
Uh, yeah, we did. I did the next day. I did get, do it, and we still have not gotten Seth on. I guarantee you. I get Seth on Wednesday. He'll get <laughs> Seth. He'll get Seth. Or you'll get Seth tomorrow, and I will be off. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, I did. I did get into it. Oh, I by the way, too. It. Hey, see, let me tell you who you have. Wait a minute, Harry. I'm gonna hook you up here. What's that? How do you think I'm getting these guys on? Um, the, I I know the mayor of Philly, Gary Cobb. Oh, gee. Okay. <laughs> okay, Brian Dawkins. He's calling all the the dude's the mayor of Philly, man. <laughs> I mean, he knows. Oh, you know G Cobb? Yeah, boys with G Cobb since I was ten years old. I've known Gary Cobb since I was ten. G Cobb comes on with you every week, right? Pretty much every Monday. Every Monday. Yeah. Got to get him. Yeah. You got to get him on. I love G. I do, yeah, I've done man. some radio with him, man. He he is just an app. Av- By the way, we oh we got Merrill Reese on today too. A little bit oh, later on in the afternoon. Yeah. Oh, from the on the uh, NFL show. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's gonna come on. I, Merrill goes. Dur- I, I can't. I won't do it. I won't embarrass myself. Okay. He's he's so, coming on. He's like. I would this. love to come on your show. See, you do it way better than me, man. <laughs> Everyone laughs at me. My imitations <laughs> suck out loud. <laughs> This terrible. I think Phil Sims too. I know Sims oh, yeah? because he's a giant guy. You know, I love Sims though. He's great. He's yeah, funny. I, I li- I'm starting to like Chris a little bit more. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. not. I've never dealt with him, but I've had. Uh, I've had Phil kid. on. Yeah. Good kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil's funny, man. Yeah, yeah. And I like. Hey, the- by the I- way, I sent. I sent Angelo a. Uh, I sent Angelo like a text. I go, hey, could come on. You want me to come on? Oh, yeah, you're kidding, right? I'm like, no, I'm not kidding, dude. What, why would he, you I go, be what? kidding? Your last name ends in O. Don't you think you're gonna hook up a brother here? I mean, you know we're related somehow. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, look, man, I've been putting up with you for a long time. We're we're boys actually. So, oh yeah, yeah. He's gonna when he has a vacation day, he's gonna try to come on the show for me. Oh, that's good. Well, what do you make, huge. Angelo? He's a legend. No, 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 no. That's not what I asked. What? I, I know what he. I know what do you, what do you make of him uh, talking to him? I mean, wait, I don't know what your, you're asking. Your relationship. I don't have a relationship. Oh, okay. No, I don't have one. I heard, I mean, I heard I just, that he was like a guy that didn't like to have, he didn't have like a whole ton of friends. And that might be, I mean, in that, the could, media. that could go also in sort of like, you know, the time that he's on, it's hard to have a life, man. That guy goes to bed at oh like my 6 30, 7 o'clock at night. Harry, you work morning drive. I did it for 23 yeah. years. And do you know the last two years, it's the first time this year that my calendar has been I did it for 23 years I got up at 315 every freaking day I lived like a vampire mm-hmm. and I'm in bed like I was 10 years old it's got to be tough it's oh be tough. man I mean you you live your life like a vampire and yeah. you really don't have a social life no. because you can't like when Sunday comes you're in bed by nine. Right. And he gets up at like two thirty three in the morning and then starts to scroll through all the games on a D on the DVR. And that's how he it's such, catches but up with it. The only the only caveat on doing morning drive is this. Pretty much when you go to bed, a lot of the stuff isn't changed. So you could kind of pre-prepare what you're gonna say. Mm-hmm. Like when you do afternoon drive or any of the like the midday show, yeah, the information could have changed. Within a middle, middle, within a matter of oh, minutes, it, it's famous for because I used to do middays most most of my radio life, and it was like clockwork where we'd be talking about something that we think might happen. Breaking story, and, and, and at one fifty five, we sign off. Here's Mikey misses music is playing, and the breaking news hits yes. right at the start of his show at two <laughs> o'clock. Right. <laughs> All the shit that you prepared, you go like this. Okay. Like, yeah. All right, this is out. And then by the time we're on the next day, Mike's talked about it. The morning yeah. show has talked about it. The night guys have talked about right. it. It's There's all nothing to go out. over. It's all talked out. Yeah. 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 Then you got to find a different angle. It's yep. all ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Totally. That, that, that happened to me so many times. You don't <laughs> think this is a trap game this weekend with the skins, do you? Well, I'm with regards to the injuries with uh, Miles Sanders. Uh, the Jordan Howard uh, question mark. Uh, the quarterback hasn't been running the ball much at all the last two weeks, and I, it's because of the ankle. I, I tell you, it could set up that way because I don't think I don't think Washington's just going to turtle up. I think they are going to show up one last week after oh, being no, embarrassed on national be, television. Yeah, this is going to yeah. be. If, 
like a Custer's last stand kind yeah. of deal here. Yeah, okay? I did too. Absolutely. Yeah. By the Eagles way, Eagles have some, to earn it. Yeah, yeah. you're going to have to earn the. And then God knows what the cow and see the Cowboys have they solidified that two hole? Uh, they've clinched the division. I don't know if they've solidified the two hole. Uh, let me check here again because because to me it comes down to matchups on who they want to sit or who they may want to play. You know what I'm saying? I don't, yeah. Had they solidified the second spot in the NFC here? I I I don't think that's necessarily locked down. Okay, so they're still playing. See, one of the things and one of the reasons why they did it this way, Harry, they did it this way so they're not going to see tanking at the end of the year where you're only giving one team a bye. Right. So now you're playing for playoff positioning and you're playing for teams that you want to play with matchups because this is all going to come down to matchups. Yeah. No, I mean, they're tied. They have the same record as both L.A. and Tampa, 11 and 4. Now, they win tiebreakers over both of them based on win percentage in conference games. But if Dallas loses, let's say, to Arizona and the Rams win, they're out of the two. I mean, they're in the three seed. Yeah. You know, well, so. people over in the chat room are saying they really like me calling the Cowboys a two-hole, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, I, hey, real quick, somebody over here reminded me. I'll let the cat out of the bag. You know I'm friends with Mike Gullick, right? Uh, I would imagine so. Yeah. yeah okay. I'm, I'm, what do you make of him taking over for Angelo? Is that a possibility? It is. He's the wow. Guy. No way. That's who um, Odyssey likes. Get out of town, Mike Gullick. Wow, that would be something. Jeez. That's well, the name that's being thrown around. Wow, that's to interesting. Potentially take over for. Um, Frangelo. See, I just didn't know at this point, having done mornings for as long as he did it, if he'd still want to go back to doing that. Mornings so in I, Philly? I, yeah, but I just never thought that, you know, I mean, he's made really good money. I thought he might just like Oh, that won't be cheap. And, I can promise no, you. <laughs> no, he can't. No way. No way. Wow. Well, Angelo made about, what, a, a million six or something? What? I think you need to up that. Up? He's like a $2 million a year guy. Now, unless that number got re- that refigured about four years ago, well, before the pandemic, he was around $2 million bucks oh, a wow. year. Oh, yeah. He's Jeez. one of the highest paid. He's one of the, the – the guys at FAN make, like, Boomer and those guys make big, big giant cash. Yeah. I know Carton told me that he was making $2.5 million a year doing mornings with Boomer. Yeah, well, and now I kind of believe like, that. He's not making that, obviously, right now because they got him on the cheap. Giannotti ain't making that kind of money. No, absolutely not. No, what no. do you make? Mike Gullick taking over for uh, – Wow, that would be something, man. You, you, you just started something now. Mike wow. Gullick taking over for Angelo when is he it, retires next year. Is it going to be Gullick and Cilio, or is it uh, just Gullick? It's I, I and true. Golik could sit silly old. They would look at me and they go, "No, no, no, no. This guy is too much of a. This guy's too much of a firecracker, man. Oh, He'd be man. taking the show over in a minute." I like Mike, and I think he's Philadelphia yeah. Eagle. He's well respected in that city too. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Um, just as long as he doesn't bring Greenberg along. Uh, I hate that guy. He's terrible. I don't know why they keep him. He's just awful. He has zero personality, dude. <laughs> I mean, honestly, anybody, yeah. and by the way, anybody who's a Jets fan, you're fucking mm-hmm. completely off my list. Yeah. You can't, you, you can't be a Jets fan. I mean, yeah. cause then you're a glutton for punishment. Right. And you're just yeah. looking for a beating. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Golik, man. That that's, that's interesting. I wonder who they pair with him. Probably somebody that's already there. Would 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 they would he be the would he be the personality and would they put a setup guy in there? Probably. Oh man, I think you'd be perfect with him. They they'd probably put a setup guy in there. I think yeah. you'd be perfect for him. Hmm. Yeah, because you remember Kevin Bacon. Kevin you're awesome Bacon. in any. Yeah, place. yeah, right, 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 right. right in there, right. you know. Yeah, yeah. How about Bruno and Gullick? Oh, they, they used to work together. That was yeah. the that was yes that was Mike and Mike before Mike and Mike. Yeah, and Tony, Gullick, you asked Mike. Tony about it, and he was like, "I'm not bitter." <laughs> I love Mike. It's an outrage. It <laughs> oh man, right? Uh, yeah, hey, it, so yeah, everyone's like this. Silio's always like, you know, stirring shit up. But I'm just telling you, man, the wow, is the that's name that's something. being thrown around because they now, like him. And he's I know this. 
he's been doing some podcasting and he's been doing some stuff with Odyssey now too. Mm-hmm. And um, I know iHeart was trying, but see, iHeart doesn't have very many radio stations around the country. Name me the number one sports talk radio station that iHeart has where they pay a lot of money. KFAN mm-hmm. um, in Minnesota. Okay. Give me another one. WDAE in Tampa. They pay no money. I was making, what's the most I ever made there was 250 grand. Now in Florida, that's good, folks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good, but they're not going to pay $2 million yeah, for yeah. a guy to go on DAE. Right. So, and the rest of those stations on iHeart, they're not don't, really big investments. But don't you think those days of the $1.82 oh, million dollars guys are over? But you know? but a, but a station like IP that's number one in the market, 12 plus, mm-hmm. it's a different animal like BZ and um, Boston. Right. You know, they pay those guys over a million bucks. Beasley does. And I know this. I was gonna. I was and supposed they've taken to, over W E E I. Like they, oh, get they this, dominate. Dude. Hey, them. I know we're talking radio stuff here, but I was get this. I was supposed to be the morning drive guy taking over for what was it called? Callahan and yeah, something in Callahan. Um, Dennis and Callahan. Dennis and Callahan. Yeah, yeah. I had a contract in front of me. I was then the pandemic. Oh, dude, the reason they took me off of the radio in San Diego was they were moving me there. I was doing shows every day. And then they came back, well, here's this. And I was like, oh, my God. And then the whole thing hit the floor. And then EEI now has been getting killed by Mm -hmm. BC. They couldn't own two sports stations or something. I don't know. You know that FM AM rule that they have in that city. They had to sell some of it. And Beasley got that station. But a station like IP, it's not a sports station. It is a sports station, but dude, those numbers, I mean, they could they can win 12 plus, Mm -hmm. not just 25, 54 men. men. Yeah. You know, wow, so that's Mike Golick could be your new morning guy in IP. Wow, I'm sure. I, I hey, I'm, you think I'm sure? I'm sure John Kincaid is all like, "Whoa, really?" <laughs> you think Angelo <laughs> is actually going to really retire this time? You think this is really it? How old is he? Because he's flirted with it before. He's talked I know. about it four years ago. They called yeah. me. Oh yeah, yeah. Mike D called me. Oh, Mike D. Yeah, he he runs Odyssey in yeah, Philly. Yeah, and so he? I was yeah. like this. Yeah, he called me and he goes, "What do you think about Philly?" And I go, "God, I, you see, hey, hey, here's what my wife said about me talking to people in Philly." She goes, "Hey, it looks like you found your home." Mm. And I go, "Why?" She goes, "Hey, you get to talk to assholes like you." And I go <laughs> like this. What's that supposed to mean? She's like, "This? No, you probably fit in really well there. I mean, you guys are always bitching about the little shit, and you're right. you're one of." The, and I'm going like. I'm not sure if I take that as a compliment or not here. She goes like this. No, you like <laughs> two. Hey, seven assholes in a room. You're one of them. It's perfect. And I'm like, what? okay, I'm going to take that yeah. as a compliment. So I've really had a great time. Um, it will be interesting. And just 70 and he'll be 71 in March. He's got it. This got to be it. Wasn't it four years ago that he signed a contract extension? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Three I can't something keep like track. that. Three years ago. Three I four can't years keep ago. Track. But I yeah, know I'm he's, sure the he's flirted going, with it before. Oh, the greatness of Joe Bell. I'm sure he's over there going, "Oh, yeah, we got our guy, Joe, uh, uh, John King." You know that guy came and tried. That guy came and hired me with a catheter in his penis. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, uh, it's 5720. Okay, I got it real yeah. quick here. Right. Okay. So I'm up at DAE and this guy's running WQAM in Miami for Beasley. This guy's got a, I don't think it was a colostomy bag, but he had like a, a catheter and he had some sort of whatever. Mm-hmm. And we're having lunch and he pissed all over his socks. And I go, What happened? He goes, My catheter broke. I go, What? He's sitting down to lunch having me trying to sign me to go down to QAM and leave DAE where I've been for 15 years. He's urinating on himself. And I went, you know, Joe, it shows me a lot of spunk that you wanted to come up here and you got a catheter in your penis. I'll sign. <laughs> and that's the guy who runs the fanatic. I right get the now. feeling that I guess shouldn't know this right now. I got, I got, I got, I got that way too much that. information. That's way too much information for me to handle. Going into the New Year holiday. Oh my god! Hey, I hope you have a good breakfast now. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I haven't eaten yet today. You're right. I haven't. Oh my god! All right, Dan. Now, who do you got come up uh, today? Who's the uh, Meryl Reese Reese today? Oh, anybody else? No, 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 no. Okay. Me and Reese. That's all I usually need. Just one. You don't want to get Golic on to break the news or uh, 
stir the pot. How about if I stir the pot? Maybe, let's see if we get Mike on maybe later in the week. And now, you know, I'll get him on. I won't say anything. And then I'll ambush him. Right, right. And I'll, I'll just go, hey, man, where it is, you're going to take over for Angelo. Oh, wow. I'll tell you. Well, who, said who said that? Who said that? Who said? Oh, no. That's, that's just the word going around name. Mike D's office in uh, David Field. I don't <laughs> wow. I'll lie. Who cares? Hey, now, it, hey, today, nobody gets held accountable for lying. So it's all good. They you don't. Can make yeah, right. Shit up. Yeah. Fake news is in. Oh, it's all in, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right dan we appreciate it man i really enjoyed uh cutting it up with you again and tomorrow you're going to be on with barrett that's going to be a great show as well and stay tuned four to six today merrill reese will join dan on his show and uh happy new year to everybody you too brother hey by all the right. way my birthday saturday oh happy birthday yeah, that's right oh, wow I, I gotta throw that in there thank there you, you Harry. Go. all right this is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. Turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com.